I'd like to talk a little bit about the, um, the diagnosis process for MS, mainly because um, often you, you hear about people being diagnosed, but you don't often hear about what they had to go through in order to reach that diagnosis, what kind of tests they've had and things like that. So I want to tell you a little bit about uh, the way that doctors test for MS in the UK. And to demonstrate it, I'm going to talk about my own diagnosis process. I was actually experienced, probably experiencing MS symptoms about three years before I was diagnosed. I lost the strength in both my hands. And at the time, though, it was actually it was put down to something different. Um, it wasn't put down to MS at all. That's actually quite common because a lot of MS symptoms can be put down to other things. So I'd had physio and it got better, but then about three years later, I completely lost the feeling down one side of my body. And so I went to my GP, my GP referred me to a neurologist. Now a neurologist is a doctor who, um, who specialises in the nervous system. And when I saw the neurologist, he said I would have to go for an MRI scan. Now, MRI scans are things which people with MS are very, very familiar with because that's usually one of the first things that a neurologist will um, ask for if they suspect MS. An MRI scanner is basically it's this great big magnet and it um, so it means that you can't wear any metal anywhere in your body. Uh, you've got to take out your earrings um, if you're um, if you watch it like for example your bra straps and things like that you can't wear a bra um, things that you would never think of zips buttons hooks all of that kind of stuff and you're sort of encapsulated within this machine when you have an MRI scan which is testing for MS it will be of your brain and your spinal cord so it, it can take quite a while. MRI scans are quite noisy um, and it can be quite scary because you're encapsulated within this machine and because you have to keep very, very still. When you have an MRI of your brain, often they will put this, um, it's what I, I, I call it a Hannibal Lecter mask. And it's not really, but just for some reason, it just reminds me of that because they um, they lock your head in, in this kind of cage thing which goes over your face so that your head doesn't move. And so I had that done and the te the results came back from that which said that I had, I had lesions. So that was, it, I had areas of inflammation. And I then had to wait for about three months because multiple sclerosis, um, basically that's multiple lesions or multiple plaques and to have a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis you need to have these lesions over space and time so over a period of time and in different areas of your brain or your and or your spinal cord so I waited for the three months went back had another MRI and it showed that yes I did have more lesions so I was then sent for a lumbar puncture now, what lumbar punctures do is um, they're also called spinal taps. Um, the, the person doing the lumbar puncture will um, insert a needle into your into your spine, and they'll withdraw some of your. Um, it's known as cerebrospinal fluid. So it's basically it's the um, the fluid within within your spine. And with multiple sclerosis, they are looking for white blood cells and also um, something called oligoclonal bands. Um, the immune system produces antibodies that fight infection and with MS, these antibodies can cross the blood brain barrier um, and basically it attacks the myelin surrounding nerves. Um, this means that the level of antibodies in the spinal fluid of someone with MS is higher than it should be. Um, and it's higher than the level in the blood because so when you have your lumbar puncture you also have some blood um, taken as well and they basically they um they compare the two and for me my my lumbar puncture it, it's not nice and it's never nice having needles stick and stuck into you especially into your into your spine um, but I was quite lucky because I didn't get what what's known as the the lumbar puncture the post LP headache 
um, which can be a side effect of a lumbar puncture. And I know people who've had it and they've said that it's just it's like some form of torture. Um, so I was really lucky and I didn't get that. I just I got a backache for a few days. Um, the results for that came back positive, And that's when my neurologist, um, this was back in 2008, um, gave me the diagnosis of relapsing remitting MS and he came to that conclusion through the MRI scans, my, my symptoms, so my actual physical symptoms and also the result of the, the lumbar puncture. From when I went to the GP when I'd first lost the feeling down one side of my body to when I got my diagnosis, this was actually relatively quick. It was around, I think probably around nine months now, I know people who wait years for an MS diagnosis, so it, it did all go relatively quickly. Um, and yeah, now I have MRIs um, every year to check what's happening in, inside, inside there. Um, and so I'm quite used to them. Um, I, I don't mind them at all. I hope that's been um, useful. It's giving you a bit of an insight into the diagnosis process and the kinds of tests that, um, that people with MS have. There are also other things. Um, so neurologists will also test your reflexes. Um, there'll be other things. So like they, um, sometimes you'll have what's known as an evoked potentials test, which um, tests the, um, it's to test the optic nerve and the speed at which signals are traveling because MS can affect the eyes. But the main um, test that almost, well, I'll probably say, you know, lots of people have are the MRIs and the lumbar puncture. Um, so, yeah, I hope that's helped. Um, if you've got any questions, then please comment um, on the on the post below. And um, 